Hey guys, it's been a while since I've uploaded on this channel, but it doesn't mean I've been doing absolutely nothing. I did do a little something with Glorious on how to loop switches, so if you're interested in that and want to show me and Glory some love, head over to their channel to check it out. I'll link the video down below. Today, we are going to be playing with this, the Soul 3, the brightest keyboard I've ever seen, but it's not all looks. It's also a very well-designed and competitively priced ergo split or the linear keyboard that will probably make some ErgoDox owners out there just a bit jealous. So the first thing I wanna talk about with the RGB KB Soul 3 is the build experience because this is one of the most fun I've had building a keyboard in what feels like a very long time. The star of the show is what RGB KB is calling the R mounting system and you can categorize it as gasket mount because both the switch plate and the PCB are floating but how they achieve this is different from anything I've seen before. The switch plate and PCB have tabs that you can use to stretch a rubber O-ring over but the Soul 3 also utilizes these laser cut shim that aligns how the gasketed layers float, making them fit perfectly with the center frame. From here, you secure the plate and PCB by using your switches, and I think this applies just the right amount of pressure to allow some room for the gasket to compress and decompress, which can be an issue on keyboards that require you to torque down screws. On those designs, it's easy to go too far negating the benefits of the gasket. The floating gasket isn't the only thing interesting about the Soul 3's design though. Normally, regardless of the mounting system, keyboards are generally held together with screws, but the Soul's R4 mounting system utilizes magnets instead to secure the top and bottom plate, and it works really well providing a toolless building experience. So the way this works is when you have the center assembly built, you place and align the center to the bottom plate, then drop in the five magnets. Once everything is in place, slowly lower the top. The magnets are pretty strong, so take your time to ease the top plate in. If you allow it to drop too fast, you could end up scratching the plastic centerpiece. One thing to know about this magnet system is that it's not available for every configuration of the Soul 3. If you go with the carbon fiber accessories, those will of course use the traditional screws and standoffs. Fully assembled, this configuration comes in at about 603 grams each. The weight will fluctuate a bit depending on how you configure this thing, which I'll talk about in a moment, but in general, the Soul 3 is a hefty keyboard and it feels very solid. Another reason this build was such a good experience was because of just how well documented each of the steps were. There's no guessing or wondering if you missed a step, so this should be a very good building experience regardless if you've built multiple keyboards in the past or completely new to the hobby. With everything assembled, this is how the Soul 3 looks fully built with the brushed stainless steel top and bottom plates, foam insert, frosted frame, PCB, FR4 switch plate, Boba U4 RGB switches, and DSA polar keycaps that are also from RGB KB. It looks really good, so let's take a peek around. First, the keycaps. They are PBT, they're relatively thick, and have a nice texture that makes it really nice to type on. The set is dice up, so the legends aren't as defined as what you'd see on Double Shot, but they do get the job done. Now, if you want to run your own custom keycaps, this is where things get a bit tricky. Now, this isn't an issue specific to the Soul 3. It's a problem that a lot of these Ergo keyboards face in general. In the case of the Soul 3, there are 12 1.5U keycaps, which makes it very difficult to buy a complete set of keycaps that will fill this keyboard out perfectly. What you can do is find a set that you want to use, use the alpha from those, and try to find blank modifiers that will complement them. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more later, but these two columns of keys can actually be removed and replaced with more advanced components, such as a scroll pad or OLED screen. You can even swap in a rotary encoder on both sides of the thumb cluster as well, so the level of customization here is very high. 
Without any adjustments or modifications, the Soul 3 sits flat to the table, but with the optional tenting feet, you can position the keyboard at either a 10 or 18% typing angle. More specifically, these two angles are what's documented, but in reality, you can slightly tune the angle using the other available slots, but 10 and 18 are the min and max. Unfortunately, to adjust the degree, you do have to remove four screws to swap in an extender, which kind of goes against the Toolist magnet theme, but it does attach to the keyboard with magnets, so in that regard, I guess it's a bit of a wash. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be the case with the retail kit, but mine didn't come with the appropriate Allen key to put these together, so I had to go and find one myself, which was a bit annoying. Unless you know for sure you're okay with the flat typing experience, I would highly recommend picking this up. In the past, RGBKB has offered SCLs on their GitHub, so users could print out legs of different heights so you can experience different variations. You could even use those designs and modify them to how you want them. That was really cool, and I hope they do the same with the Soul 3. The biggest issue I found with this tenting design is that it only offers adjustments on a single axis. So if you're coming from something like the Ergodox EZ or Moonlander where you can have adjustments every which way, you might find the Soul 3's adjustability a bit lacking. Each side of the Soul 3 has two USB-C ports for a total of four. Very happy to see these here. The inner ports are used to connect the two halves together while the two outer ports are used to connect to your PC. Now this is nice because it allows the Soul 3 to adapt to your desk configuration so you're not pulling long cables across your workspace. So what you're looking at here is only one of the many, many variations that you can piece together. And that is what gives the Soul 3 the leg up over something like an Ergodox. The Ergodox keyboards are great for people that want to get into Ergo keyboards without having to deal with too many tuning knobs and still have a good experience. But for people that know exactly what they want or are willing to tinker, the Soul 3 has more options to play with. With the Soul 3, you have the ability to change the top and bottom plate. Mine is brushed stainless steel, but e-white, black, and carbon fiber are also available. I don't have the carbon fiber option with me, but from the picture, it looks like a 2x2 weave if that matters to you. For the center frame, you have the option between the diffuse white, which is my favorite. The LED roll-off between the colors is really nice with this material. Clear if you want the keyboard to live up to the sole name and smoke if you're looking for something just a bit more subdued. In terms of switch plate, you can pick between FR4, which if you didn't know, is the material used for building PCBs, along with stainless steel, carbon fiber, palm, and brass. I have the FR4 and stainless steel, and of the two, I prefer the FR4 since it's a softer material, so tapping on it doesn't feel as rigid, and the sound doesn't resonate through the keyboard as much. As for the Switch PCB itself, it is white with a few accents throughout the board and comes with hot swap sockets. Now I've seen people ask if there will be a solder variant in the future, and after building up and breaking down this keyboard a few times, I would have to say hot swap is the way to go because of how the R4 mounting system works. Once you have the PCB and switch plate sandwiched between the center frame, there's no way to get it off without desoldering your switches. Aside from those, you have the option to pick up some pretty cool accessories. We talked about the magnetic feet earlier, but you can also pick up foam inserts and more advanced components like a touch bar that you can also set up for things like volume control and scrolling. This has already gotten some gears in my head spinning of what's possible. For example, it'd be really cool if you combine this to products like Adobe so you can quickly fine tune color adjustments. There's even an OLED screen module that you can presumably program to display stats and use it to adjust settings on your keyboard, but hopefully you'll be able to grab data from your host system as well for things like CPU or GPU clock speeds. I personally don't know how well these modules will work in practice, the OLED screen seems pretty straightforward, so I'm all in on that. But the scrolling one is one of those things where it's so simple that we don't really think about it, but when it doesn't feel right, it really sticks out. And I'm hoping RGBKB nails it because having two scroll bars on each hand would be awesome. If and when I learn more about these modules, I'll post an update in the comments section below. Now we can't talk about a keyboard with the name Soul without talking about its RGB system. This thing has 158 LEDs and like the sun, not only is this thing insanely bright, brighter than any keyboard I own, but you might need Fusion to power it as well. Seriously, it's one of the first warnings you see in the Soul 3 build guide and I definitely ran into this problem. Using this Intel Nook, the only USB port that worked properly was this front one but it wasn't just that the Soul 3 was drawing too much power. I also had an issue where one of my coil cables wasn't able to supply the keyboard with consistent power, but moving to a high quality cable 
fix that issue. This isn't really too much of a problem though since it works perfectly fine once you find the right port. And with the latest firmware, the LED turbo feature was implemented. This allows you to flip the switch in the rear of the keyboard to the opposite position and it will lower the LED brightness by 50% making it much easier to drive on a wider variety of USB ports. You can also plug in one side of the keyboard first, adjust the LED brightness level, then plug in the other side as well. 50% for me is probably the highest I'd go day to day because any higher and it's just too distracting. Another reason why I wouldn't go over 50% is that I've noticed the keyboard gets pretty warm when the LEDs are maxed out. Aside from the brightness control, you get everything you'd expect from an RGB enabled keyboard. The ability to change animation, animation speed, adjust whether the animation is displayed on the keys, frame, or both, the hue of the current color profile you're on, and my favorite, the ability to adjust the saturation. This rainbow mode, for example, is just too saturated for my preference, but dropping the saturation a bit kind of reminds me of those holographic wrapping papers from way back. Super nostalgic, and I really like how this looks. Like other QMK keyboards, you're limited to the included RGB animations unless you're willing to learn how to develop in QMK, so do keep that in mind. Speaking of QMK, that is what the Soul 3 utilizes, which is always welcome. RGB KB does provide you with a default map that you can use to flash with the QMK toolbox, but if you want to create your own custom layout and fine tune your changes, you can also use QMK MSYS and compile from source. The workflow with QMK isn't terribly difficult, but if you're coming from a keyboard with an easy to use UI to change key mappings or update firmware, this can be a bit intimidating, but RGB KB does have instructions posted to get you through it. All right, so let's talk about the typing experience for a bit. I've typed on split keyboards like this YMDK, and I've typed on ortholinear keyboards in the past, but something about combining these two aspects together short circuits my brain. But what I can tell you after using this keyboard for a few weeks is I can see why developers like using this. All the navigation keys are placed in areas that make perfect sense, and I like how commonly used keys like the square and curly brackets, along with the parentheses, are easily within reach. The thumb cluster, and I want to preface this part by saying that your experience with any ergo style keyboard's thumb cluster is really going to be dependent on the size and dexterity of your hand. With that said, the Soul 3 feels a bit cramped with my hand. My hand can spin out pretty far, so when I use the spacebar, I have to bend my thumb back at a specific angle to not only hit the spacebar, but to also avoid the delete key. In this regard, I prefer the 2U side-by-side -side configuration that is found on the ErgoDox keyboards or have this key removed and rotate the entire cluster up a bit. I want to note that this is only really a problem when I'm typing flat, which is what I prefer, but with tenting at 10 degrees, the angles do sort themselves out. Now, instead of letting you guys watch me struggle typing on this, what I am going to do instead is give you a small sound test of all the different build variations I can make with the components I have on hand so you have an idea of what they all sound like. In my opinion, the Soul 3 sounds best with the FR4 plate. Its flexible nature works really well to complement the dampened characteristics of the Boba U4 switches. I would have loved to try the brass plate, but unfortunately that option was not available. Now there is one quirk that I ran into with the FR4 configuration that I didn't see with the stainless steel plate. In some situation, it flexes just enough that the switch legs may come into contact with the metal bottom plate, triggering unwanted actuations. For example, here pressing the letter K too hard triggers the surrounding keys. I've only experienced this while playing games like Warzone, so if you're just typing, this shouldn't be an issue. But regardless, I think instead of providing just five little plastic dots for the magnets, maybe a precision cut sheet that covers the whole bottom plate can be included instead. At this point, the only thing left to cover is the price, and on this front, the Soul 3 is very competitive. The configuration I have here has a subtotal of $262, and if you compare that to the price of something like the EZ or Moonlander, you have plenty of wiggle room in the budget for additional upgrades or to just pocket that cash if you wanted to. You can also offer a pre-built model if you're not interested in the build aspect for slightly more, but it does come with better specs than what I have here while coming in at well under 
here, $350. Overall, the Soul 3 is a great addition to the Ergo keyboard scene and has more than enough options to draw in new users and keep the interest of enthusiasts. It's a polished product, which is refreshing to see considering many Ergo options, aside from Ergodox, still kind of look like science experiments. Well, that's it for today. Let me know what you think of the Soul in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.